Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by First Paw Coffee Company, specializing in private label premium blend coffee. If you're serious about coffee, you should check it out. First Paw Coffee's passion is high quality, small batch roasted coffee. They take the extra time to taste and get everything perfect before they release new blends. They aim to bring you a cup of happiness each time you pour yourself some coffee. Find out more at ak.dog slash free and enter for a chance to win some First Paw Coffee prizes, a book from our collection and tote bag. One winner will be selected at random each month. That's ak.dog slash free. What are the four critical periods and how do they affect my dog's physical and mental growth? Welcome to part two of our critical periods of a puppy's life. If you did not listen to part one, pause here and go back and listen. We will be right here when you get back. I have been involved with the physical health and well-being of dogs since I was 15 years old. At that time, there weren't many VHS videos about dog training, and there certainly was not a search engine called Google or a YouTube channel that can literally teach you anything you want to know in minutes. I learned by trial and error, by talking to others and eventually gaining a mentor or two over the years. All the while reading books about learning theory and doing my best to stay up to date. In the late 1990s, I stumbled upon a book called The New Knowledge of Dog Behavior by Clarence Pfaffenberger. This book set in motion not only a viable career in dog training, but shaped my approach to it and my understanding of it so that I could help people make better choices when choosing their own dogs and has assisted in the development of my own breeding programs with German Shepherds and Siberian Huskies and eventually Alaskan Huskies. If you are a canine enthusiast, dog trainer, dog breeder, or just someone interested in how dogs learn, then this is the program for you. If you know someone that may benefit from this information, please share this podcast, DogWorks Radio, with them. Let's get started with part two of four. From First Paw Media, sponsored by Alaska Dog Works Professional Canine Training Center in Anchorage, Alaska. This is Dog Works Radio, committed to families and their dogs to build lifelong and fulfilling relationships. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now, here are your hosts, Robert and Michelle Forto. Hello and welcome to Dog Works Radio. This is your host, Michelle Forto, and I am the lead trainer of Alaska Dog Works. Are you one of the few people that train your dog? As a professional dog trainer, I find it interesting that every inquiry I receive is always about unwanted dog behaviors that I immediately recognize as starting during the four critical periods of life for a dog. On part one, we talked about the first three weeks of a puppy's life, and this week we are going to dive deeper and cover weeks three through six. If only the breeder whether a professional or an amateur, had just taken the time to learn about canine development and behavior and had then incorporated it into their breeding program, even if it was just a one-time breeding or accidental, then the dogs they are producing would actually gain a better start in life that would stick with them far into adulthood, thus producing a well-rounded, adjusted pup that owners would be highly unlikely to be wary of and ready to give up on. I often do breed referrals for people looking for the right dog for their family, and I am the one who chooses your pup for our Lead Dog Service Dog Program. Over the past two decades, I have trained several hundred dogs. In fact, I average about 250 new dogs every year. That's a lot of dogs. I have bred my own litters and trained each and every one of them up to the age of 12 weeks. But I have also trained many of them into adulthood. I have trained many other puppies and rescues, and I have seen many mistakes made by breeders, pet stores, shelters, 
fosters, and even the new owners themselves. Puppies have four critical periods of life. This is part two. I hope you tune in next week for part three. Again, I have used the information I am sharing for years in raising puppies and preparing them for life. It is my hope that the novice and the expert in raising and training of dogs appreciates the information being shared and utilizes this information to raise well-balanced, better-trained puppies. Here's a little reminder, you guys. The purpose of the puppy program is to condition the puppy to learn and that learning and doing things are fun. The program aims at preventing problems rather than correcting problems later. That's pretty important. Let me repeat that. The program aims at preventing problems rather than correcting problems later. This purpose of puppy program must be fully understood. Therefore, I recommend that you do not attempt to program any puppy until you are familiar with Clarence Pfaffenberger's The New Knowledge of Dog Behavior. The second critical period of life begins on day 22 and completes its cycle at day 49. Days 22 through 28 This is the single most important week in a puppy's lifetime. The puppy is now aware of self-environment. The puppy learns he is a dog. He learns to accept discipline. He learns submission. He moves around on wobbly steps and shows curiosity and begins exploring the environment. Note, Any puppy intended for conditioning as a compulsive retriever must be weaned absolutely by the end of this week. This is very important for the future obedience of the dog. Also of note, if you are training a puppy or breeding puppies for specific goals when they become adults, like a retriever, there are different ways that we introduce different stages of teaching throughout the first four periods of the puppy's life. You will continue touch conditioning every day this week. This is the puppy's first week of conscious life as we know it. They should not be disturbed or traumatized in any way except for the two brief daily exercise periods of touch conditioning. Any traumatic experience during this week can have far-reaching, lifelong, unpleasant results. During this week, you should organize the gathering of the puppy toys. These include objects made of all of the following. Rubber, vinyl, plastic, squeak toys, metal, band-aid rollers, six-inch lengths of conduit, which later become utility obedience articles, ice cream tin lids bent in half, etc. Glass small brown vitamin pill bottles, etc., with lids removed, fabric, notably two long socks, each having two knots tied, one at either end. These are later rolled into balls and become two of your most important tracking articles in your early tracking training. Leather, Use six strips of fresh new cowhide, six inches long by one inch wide. These also become vital later on in tracking and obedience as well as search and rescue and Red Cross work as well as protection dog training. Rawhide, these are 100% edible treated beef hide items. The ones shaped like potato chips and called pup chips are the ones to provide at this time. These provide the ideal teething substance and are instinctively more satisfying to puppies than are of any other articles. Do not include wooden articles at this stage. Do include plastic items such as an old remote control and include items such as keys. These will become guide, service, and therapy training articles. 
Do not exclude anything from this collection and replace anything that gets lost. This is being done for several very important reasons, which you will appreciate more and more as you begin serious training and you find out that while other dogs must learn to retrieve, to find by scent, to tolerate metal in their mouths, etc., you have a dog with a custom-built mind who does these things automatically. Virtually anything can be incorporated into a puppy program once we know the critical period. During this period, the puppy should be guarded against trauma of any kind. Make this period a stable period in the puppy's life. The puppy can be moved to different areas temporarily to be conditioned to different surfaces, but do not change the puppy's permanent area and do not change the schedule. My goodness, you guys, that's just days 22 through 27. There's a whole lot going on in that week. Here we go, on to day 28. The puppy is now four weeks old. This is the last day of touch conditioning. Days 29 through 35. This is also a very important week. Begin sound conditioning. This is the abolition of the startle response, which will otherwise occur whenever loud or sudden noises are heard. I should not have to point out the vital importance of this. Remember that dogs do not inherit gun shyness. Four to six loud bangs daily when puppies are sleeping, eating, playing, but not when puppies are looking at you or coming towards you. This critical period for this is week four through six. Do these loud noises every day from day 28 through day 42. Then review by testing for sound startle once weekly. The program should include all types of sounds to which the pup will be subjected to while working in its adult job. Use guns, cap pistols, saucepan lids. Always expose them to the sound of a stock whipping being cracked. Use tape recordings of crowds, traffic, crying babies, trains, heavy machinery, fireworks, thunderstorms, etc. Ideally, the pups should be placed individually in a soundproof booth when they are subjected to the tape recordings. The real thing is best if you can gain exposure to it. The dam should be out of the puppy's range of vision and hearing while sound conditioning is being done. Do not omit any type of these sounds. This is one of the most important parts of the programmed puppy. Introduce a stable male dog as daddy to teach the puppies a different perspective from the start. Introduce puppies to an obstacle course like tunnels, tires, covered balance, walk, etc. We're going to take a short break here and learn all about First Paw Coffee. So earlier you learned about First Paw Coffee Company, and now I'm going to tell you about its Tail Wagger Blend. First Paw Coffee Company's Tail Wagger Blend is their first offering, and its name and label were crowdsourced from their Facebook fans. How cool is that? The Tail Wagger Blend is a private label premium blend that was developed just for them. It is a medium roast from Colombian beans with tastes of Brazil nuts, grapefruit, and oak. Be sure to go to ak.dog slash free and enter to win a bunch of cool prizes. That's ak.dog slash free. Okay, we are back. Before the break, we covered weeks three and four of a puppy's life and how critical that time is in their development. We're going to jump right back in with week five. Day 35, the puppies are now five weeks old. They have better control of their bodies. They can walk over obstacles, walk up and down stairs. They should recognize familiar persons and show curiosity about other people, other animals, and new surroundings. Continue sound conditioning. Begin reinforcing the following response. Day 36 through 42. 
reinforced the following response as follows. Take each pup separately to a large open grassy area. Handler places pup on grass and slowly walks away without speaking or looking back. Go 10 feet, stop, face puppy, and wait quietly until the pup begins a distress cry, like, I'm lost. Then, clap hands and move body back and forth until the pup sees you and approaches. Hold the pup's head in your hands for three to four seconds, then walk slowly away again. Repeat over and over until the puppy follows whenever you move off. Limit this to five minutes daily per pup up to week seven or day 49. Note, do not reinforce following in areas in which persons other than yourself can be seen or heard by the puppies. The following response will occur towards you in a much reduced form if other humans or animals are present. The importance of this will not become obvious until much later in the puppy's behavioral development. Continue sound conditioning. Introduce other people, children, wheelchairs, walkers, cats, other pets, and all else now. Day 42. Six weeks old. Test for any residue of sound startle. Last day of sound conditioning. Reinforce following. Some states legally allow you to purchase and take home your puppy at six weeks of age. I'm going to continue on with our critical periods and you'll discover why taking home a six week old puppy isn't advisable. Day 43, socialize, short car trip, play with the long sock, play retrieve, isolate briefly, go to new location, reinforce following, make puppy go through tunnel to follow. Also begin training on dog doors. Day 44, socialize, another car trip, play with the long sock, play retrieve, Isolate briefly, go to a new location, and reinforce following. Help the puppy walk on the balance walk. Day 45, socialize. Car trip, play with long sock, play retrieve. Isolate briefly, go to a new location, reinforce following, help the puppy walk on the balance walk. Day 46, same thing, repeat it again. Day 47 is a little bit different. Socialize, car trip, play with long sock, play retrieve, isolate briefly, go to a new location, reinforce following, and sit in a swing and swing with the puppy. Call the puppy over a small obstacle. Day 48, socialize, car trip. Play with long sock, play retrieve, isolate briefly, go to a new location, reinforce following, sit in a swing and swing with the puppy. Call the puppy over a small obstacle. Day 49, the puppy is now seven weeks old. There's been a lot of socializing, but we're not done yet. Continue socializing, go on a car trip, play with the long sock, play retrieve, Isolate briefly, go to a new location, and this is the last day reinforcing following. It is the first vaccination. Note, vaccination using Edmondson strain measles virus should be given at seven weeks. This is assuming that the bitch was vaccinated within 12 months of whelping. Test for any residual startle to sound. Introduce crate training. Allow the pup to walk into the crate with the top removed, placing the top on on after a few days, placing the door on, closing the door, and eventually leaving the pup in the crate for short periods of time. Wow, that's a whole lot going on during the seventh week. And notice, Mr. Foffenberger suggests that the breeder introduce the puppy at seven weeks of age to the crate for the first time. 
first swim if weather is okay. Swim outside using a small toddler wading pool. If the weather is bad, use the bathtub. Make sure you do this. Note, prepare early. It's easy to set up your phone or a GoPro and do a video journal. You'll also want a calendar with ample space to take notes. These items make it easy to archive your notes and recording each puppy in its critical periods. This can be helpful when you go to your place your puppy in his or her new home. You can share these archives with your new puppy owner and be sure to go over your training program so that it can be followed. When we come back from the break, we are going to go behind the breed and learn all about the Karelian Bear Dog. Don't forget that we will be continuing our four critical periods with part three next week. We're living in uncertain times. If there is one thing we can be thankful for, that is the recent pet adoption boom. Shelters are being cleared out, and that means you may not know much about your new best friend. Alaska Dog Works virtual and on-site classes are the best way for you to build a lasting bond and learn about your pup, new or old. From setting up a proper routine to learning the commands and much more, Alaska Dog Works provides you with the resources to develop your dog into one of the best. Right now, Alaska Dog Works has an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Go to alaskadogworks.com now and use promo code DOGWORKS and save 20% off your training program at the time of your booking. Visit alaskadogworks.com and use promo code DOGWORKS to save 20% today. That's alaskadogworks.com and use promo code DOGWORKS at the time of booking. Okay, guys, let's learn all about how to train a Karelian bear dog, shall we? Did you know I have a lot of experience with these dogs? I trained two of them in the last month. They are very popular with owners who are looking for sturdy companions that do well in the outdoors. You can take these guys on any outdoor trip and they make perfect adventure dogs. About the Karelian bear dog. The Karelian Bear Dog is a medium-sized spitz with a dense coat, bred to hunt large, aggressive game by himself. His build reflects his duties. He is a silent hunter and only barks once the game is stopped or treed. Working with an experienced hunter, he communicates the type of animal he has located by the sound of his bark. Though he can demonstrate self-control around people, his fighting spirit surfaces around other dogs and can be difficult to handle. His spirit easily turns into aggression as Karelian bear dogs love a challenge. Here are some quick facts. Karelian bear dogs originated in Finland. They have a cautious, tenacious, independent, loyal, brave, territorial temperament. They are, males are 21 to 24 inches tall with females being 19 to 22 inches tall. Males weigh between 41 and 51 pounds. Females weigh between 44 and 51 pounds. The life expectancy of a Karelian bear dog is between 11 and 13 years. So the Karelian bear dog is a Phoenician breed that originated in Northwestern Europe and was originally the dog of Russian and Phoenician peasants used for hunting and as a watchdog. Only the toughest survived fightings and the harsh conditions while hunting. Early dogs had red, red, gray and black and white coats. The Komi dog, also called the dog of Zerians, is considered to be the origin of the breed. However, the basic stock dogs originated from the Lagodas Karelia, Olenets, and Russian Karelia, where they were used for all different types of game hunting. The breeding was started in 1936 with the goal to create a sturdy dog which barks at big game. In further breeding, the progeny was selected to the Karelian bear dog type and only black and white dogs were preferred for breeding. It was then agreed that the same name of the breed was to be 
the Karelian Bear Dog. The first standard was established in 1945. The first Karelian Bear Dogs were registered in the Phoenish Kennel Club in 1946. Today, the breed is one of the top 10 most common breeds in Finland. The Karelian Bear Dog is primarily a hunting breed, but can be trained for and compete in obedience trials, search and rescue trials, and sled dog trials in its native country. Care and training. The Karelian Bear Dog should do well on a high-quality dog food, whether commercially manufactured or home-prepared, with your veterinarian supervision and approval. Any diet should be appropriate to the dog's age puppy, adult, or senior. Some dogs are prone to getting overweight, so watch your dog's calorie consumption and weight level. Treats can be an important training aid, but giving too many can cause obesity. Learn about which human foods are safe for dogs and which are not. Check with your vet if you have any concerns about your dog's weight or diet. Clean, fresh water should be available at all times. Beyond regular weekly grooming, the occasional bath will keep your Karelian bear dog clean and looking its best. Grooming can be a wonderful bonding experience for you and your pet. The strong, fast-growing nails should be trimmed regularly with a nail clipper or grinder to avoid overgrowth, splitting, and cracking. Their ears should be checked regularly to avoid a buildup of wax and debris, which can result in infection. Teeth should be brushed regularly. Temperament. Karelian bear dogs are naturally aggressive towards other animals. They typically require deliberate socialization or acculturation with anything the owner is around often. They are very affectionate with their owners but can be aggressive towards strangers. Proper socialization and training is necessary due to their aggressive disposition. Karelian bear dogs are very territorial and will alert their handler to the presence of any strangers or other animals nearby that they do not know. They are silent but tenacious hunters and alert their handler only when they have the prey at bay. They will keep prey cornered by barking in a very high, fast bark and running back and forth or around the animal until their handler comes and dispatches it. Karelian bear dogs have been known to hold an animal at bay for a very long time. If a bear tries to leave, the dog will nip at it on the backside and otherwise aggravate it to keep it from running away. They don't always have to hunt with their master as they can be trained to work with other people. However, they are prone to separation anxiety due to their very social nature. It is very rare for a Karelian bear dog to bite a human, but it may kill another animal if it feels threatened or hungry. They are very social hunting dogs that prefer an outdoor environment and need plenty of space to run free and get sufficient exercise. In addition, they need a lot of mental and physical stimulation as this working breed is used to having a job to do. These traits tend to prevent the breed from becoming popular companion dogs. Options for exercise include playtime in the backyard, preferably fenced, or walks several times a day. Exercise can also come in the form of indoor activities like hide-and-seek, chasing a ball, rolled along the floor, or learning new tricks. Certain outdoor activities like swimming, hiking, and retrieving balls or flying discs can provide a good outlet for expending energy. If you live in an apartment, even short walks in the hallways can give your dog some good exercise, especially during inclement weather. Training for dog sports like agility, obedience, and rally can also be a great way to give your dog exercise. Working with a responsible breeder, those wishing to own a Karelian bear dog can gain the education they need to know about specific health concerns within the breed. Good breeders utilize health screenings and genetic testing of their breeding stock to reduce the likelihood of disease in their puppies.
If you'd like to learn more about how to train your Karelian Bear Dog to be one of the best trained dogs, visit our website, alaskadogworks.com, to learn more. As always, follow us on our social channels. Just search DogWorks Radio. See you next time. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company. Learn more at firstpaw.coffee. From First Paw Media, this is Dog Works Radio. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you'll see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. Your hosts are Robert and Michelle Forto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media. Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Forto and her team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com.